Now we begin with our top story this hour. One of Nigeria's leading institutions, Zenith Bank, has unveiled its third quarter financials clearly demonstrating its market dominance. The bank's gross earnings increased by 4% compared to figures recorded in 2018. Now, despite a challenging macroeconomic backdrop, uh, the group recorded a significant growth in non-interest income, expanding by 22%. According to its management, the platforms and channels were the enablers of this growth, with fees from electronic products doubling to 35.3 billion naira. A rise of business analyst Chika Mbono joins me in the studio to explain all of this. Uh, Chika, it's good to have you with us. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, morning, Lee. So, what are the highlights of this uh, third quarter 2019 results? Talking about Zenith Bank. Yeah, you know, um, this is a, the nine month quarter trade result yeah. of Zenith. Um, the top line growth was 4%, as I already, already mentioned. Despite the um, macroeconomic environment that we have that is still relatively weak, mm. um, they grew their gross earnings by 4%. All right. Now, even though the interest in net interest income line fell by 6%, they compensated for this by looking at their non-net interest income line, mm. which grew by 22%, yeah. driven principally by their electronic fees um, lines, which actually doubled from about 17, uh, $17 billion to about $34 billion over the nine months of the year. Mm. And um, you, you find that their channels and their platforms have been very active. Mm. Then it is known as one of those banks that has very efficient you know, electronic platforms, okay. the alternative channels for their, their business. And uh, then it's during the year also has aggressive cost cutting and cost, cost optimization procedures, yeah. um, policies they initiated. Um, you know, then it has a, one of the largest branch networks in the country. True. Power seems, happens to be one of the major costs for the, these branches, running these branches. Okay. And then it has uh, dive into renewable energy and alternative power, power, power programs mm. to reduce the cost in these places. No, no wonder the top line reflected in a growth of about 5% in the profit before tax to a whopping $177 billion, the highest for nine months Zenith has made so far, and the highest for the, the top five, top four banks uh, that have already published their results for the, for the season. You know, if you look at the balance sheet, Zenith also pursued an aggressive retail banking growth, which had reflected in about 5%, 5 7% growth in the, cost of, in the deposit base, yeah. um, driven by the growth in the retail, retail deposits. Resting on this platform of retail, retail growth, they grew their loan, loan books by more than um, 9%. Now, this will be good music in uh, CBN ears, knowing that CBN has been begging, you know, encouraging banks mm -hmm. to expand their, their, their lending. Now, but you will expect that with the growth in their risk asset portfolio, yeah. um, maybe MPLs, non-performing loans will increase. But this didn't happen for Zenith. Zenith has been known also to have a very robust and sound risk management processes. Mm. Indeed, their MPL ratio came down from 4.98% to 4.95%. Right. Indeed, that's the lowest in the industry currently, um, below the 5% statutory maximum for banks. Mm -hmm. Do remember that uh, most of the other banks were analyzed. Mm -hmm. Theirs was above 5.5%. Mm -hmm. I think the, the nearest to them is UBA, who came in at 5.7% mm -hmm. for, the, for the year. Um, Zenith is also working to make sure they comply with CBM policies that, that enable them to comply with the new lent to deposit ratio of 65% by, by year end. Okay. Now, focusing on size, you know, size is very important. But most important for the banks is also the ratios. What have you done with your size? Yeah. The capital that you have, how, how what did you do with it? Okay. You know, have you used optimally? Um, the ratios in, in, for Zeniba include the following, as I mentioned earlier. The MPL is solid at 4.995, below the CBN statutory mini, mini, right. maximum. Mm -hmm. The return on equity basically says, measures that if an investor gave you 100 naira at the beginning of the year, how much will you return to them? Mm. They came in at 23, 23.82. You know, just almost as flat they, like they had last year. The return on asset, again, has to do with your big. How, what are you doing with that size that you are? Your total asset is large. What are you doing with that asset? How, how much are you earning with that asset? And then it came in about 3.37. Mm. You know, just also almost like the same ratio they had last year. Okay. Most important also is because of the cost income ratio, which measures for every 100 naira they earn, how much do they spend to earn it? Okay. Basically, then it, then it came out 50 naira. So for every 100 naira they earn, they spend about 50 naira to do that. And the loan to deposit ratio came in at 55.80. Right. Do you recall that Zenith was one of the banks, the Central Bank of Nigeria also um, you know, penalized mm -hmm. for not complying with their ratio. So basically, those are the highlights. So you have to summarize them. I said Zenith, Zenith is profitably, profitable. They had their highest um, nine months results mm -hmm. since their inception. Where, you know, two, their cost, um, in, in cost to income ratio is being, is being managed downwards. 
and the retail strategy is, is growing. Yeah, very good. Uh, despite the uh, operating uh, environment, uh, still impressive uh, results, no doubt. So what strategies have the bank used for the first nine months of the year and how effective have they been, yeah. you think? I, I think the Zenith has anchored their strategy yeah. on, I think, uh, th three or four prongs. The first one has been the aggressive retail expansion, retail growth expansion. Now, that has led to the growth in their, risk, in their deposit base mm. by, nine, by about 9%. And then it's brought their costs, uh, cost of funds mm. to 2.95 percent from a high 3.3 that it was before. So the retail strategy has helped them in the in the reduction in the cost of um, yeah. funds. The other thing that Zenith has done very well is their cost optimization processes that have been driving to bring down their cost of operation. They have brought that down from about 51 naira to 50 naira for every 100 naira they earn. Okay. So that has worked for them. The other thing that has helped, helped Zenith against the, the rich management processes. Zenith have been known to be robust. And have been intentional drive to reduce their NPLs. That has also worked down for them. Okay. From a five, uh, 4.95 that it was, be, uh, nine, eight it was before, mm. they brought it down to 4.95, which is very good, below the CBN maximum that they have. Very good. Now, let's talk about comparisons here. How do these results compare with the results of other top five banks? And uh, they have also released their uh, third quarter 2019 results as well. We, you know, the, 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 the banks are called the top five banks in the country. Um, uh, the first bank... UBA, Access Bank, All right. um, GTV, and Zenit. Incidentally, only um, four have released their results. Mm -hmm. So Access, we're still waiting for Access results. They've been carrying out some um, system upgrade, trying to match the operations with the old Diamond Bank. Yeah. I guess that has caused some delay. A bigger in, bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah delaying right. the results. Mm -hmm. You know, um, on PBT, profit before tax, Zenit came in at 1.176 billion. Okay. This is the highest among the top four banks. Indeed, the highest that Zenit has had since its inception All right. for nine months. GTB came in at one point, you know, he's always flowing, you know, Zenit closely on profitability. Okay. GTB came in at about 170.7 billion. So that is um, commendable. Mm -hmm. And then followed by UBA at 98. UBA, remember I mentioned, I think yesterday, that UBA is on fire. Yeah. UBA has been growing. Mm -hmm. And I, I see UBA, UBA is um, growing. When I look at one more ratio, yeah. you, you will understand why UBA is um, waiting to take on these other banks. Other banks, these other tough banks should actually be worried about UBA, you know, because UBA is actually now who's sweating on his assets. All right. On size, for now, for the four, five bank, four banks we have analyzed, okay. Zenit came in at 5.978 trillion, the largest among the five, among the four we have analyzed, followed by First Bank, 5.735 trillion. And the lowest, of course, as understandably, GT. Mm. GT came last again in size, and at 3.531 trillion. Deposit base, which measure, measures the ability of the, the bank to mobilize deposit from customers. And sometimes, mm. Some measure, 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 measurement of the confidence in the brand yeah. of the bank. Zenith again came in first at 3.95 trillion. Mm -hmm. And then First Bank came in second. And then UBA third and GTB last. And then, of course, loan books, which CBN would love to know. You know Zenith came in highest again. So, on the parameters were measured of total assets, mm -hmm. deposits, and loans, Zenith came in uh, highest. Now, but you hear me so, so, so far say mm -hmm. GTB was coming last, GTB coming last. Now, GTB normally works for the efficiency ratios. Basically, what are you doing with your size? Indeed. You know, even though we are, we are not the biggest, what are you doing with your size? Yeah. On um, cost income ratio, which measures how efficient is the bank in spending money? GT, GT is spending for every 100 naira they end, they spend at 7 naira. Zenit, for every 100 naira they end, they spend 15 naira. So you can see that GT mm. is more efficient than Zenit in that respect. UBS spends about 61 naira, and First Bank spends about 72 naira. First Bank had a one time expense um, uh, uh, incurred mm. during the quarter that made them, um, the expense rise. Return on equity is a major measurement of the performance of efficiency of banks. Mm. Basically, it says if an investor gives you 100 naira, yeah. how much will return to them at the end of the year? For GT, it comes in about 32 naira. So if you give, investor gives GT 100 naira, at the end of the year, they return about 32 naira. Mm. Zenith will return about 23 naira, 24 naira. Yeah. And then UBA, 20, 20, 21 naira. And then First Bank, which is the lowest there, returns about um, 12. Now, the last ratio I want to look at is the return on asset. Mm -hmm. You heard me mention that on the size, total asset of the bank, how are they sweating it? How much are they making from it? For GT, for, eight, for every 100 naira of asset they have, they make about 5.8 naira. Yeah. Now, Zenith makes about 3.37 naira. Now, that's why I brought up the UC of UBA. UBA currently makes about 1.6. Now, UBA is actually a sleeping giant. Okay. And the other banks ahead of you should be scared mm -hmm. because UBA is running, running on its platforms, improving its procedures, and I believe that once they start sweating these assets, 
They're going to make more money than these other banks. Very good. Interesting development there. But, uh, Chika, I'd like you to reflect on these other issues whereby still in Nigeria, the country's apex bank, uh, CBN, has ordered lenders to start participating in its open market operations or OMO auctions on behalf of local corporate and individuals. As the bank attempts, demand the management to reduce its open market operations liabilities and return the liquidity management tool to traditional use. Uh, Chika, I'm is still with us. So, Chika, so... What do you make of this development? Can you well, I mean, um, it, it, I, I say it's a, it's a battle of the banks mm -hmm. trying to optimize the earnings on their assets. You do recall that CBN objective in the recent past has been to, you know, push banks to lend money to the risk sector. Yeah. That has been a major challenge. And the banks are also trying to balance it. You know, if we lend money to the risk sector, let's say, we earn about 20 to 21 percent with the risks. If we give the money to the federal government of Nigeria, if by buy treasury bills, either yeah. from the Nigerian treasury bill window or the OMO window, we earn about 13 percent with 13 risk. Mm. So why, you know, go and take all the risk? Mm -hmm. So you find that the banks are always trying to gravitate towards the treasury bills, mm. and CBN is working assiduously, very hard to plug all the loopholes mm. that enable banks to, you know, go and um, you know put this money there. For example, you do recall that the Central Bank of Nigeria force banks to do the lend-to-deposit lend, lend ratio okay. up to 60%. percent What some banks, CBN had found that some banks did was they actually took the loans or the money and gave some capital investment companies mm -hmm. as loans. And those companies used to go and buy treasury bills. They're fitting the aim of CBN or pushing yeah. the money to the risk sector. Mm -hmm. So this initiative now, once more, is just one of those things. It says you can buy automobiles mm -hmm. on proprietary or non-proprietary basis. Proprietary means for your own books. Okay. The banks buying with own liquidity. Right. Non-property buying for other people. However, the property now is limited to only foreign investors. Mm -hmm. No more Nigerian corporates or organizations can buy automobiles. Again, forcing banks to push the money to the real, to the real sector. Mm. Interesting. So how effective have the CBN policies uh, to refocus bank to their core business been so far? Well, the, it's been a uh, mixed success. In the sense that CBN in examination found out that some banks tried to run trip, as I mentioned now, yeah. by using the C uh, TB window, giving investment companies money as if it's l lending. Meanwhile, the CDM objective is that we want you to lend to the real sector, yeah. the manufacturing companies, you know, the mortgage companies, mm -hmm. the individuals like you and me in, in retail lending, yeah. so the economy can grow. So that's, uh, that has been that. But be that as it may, some other banks actually have started pushing retail lending. Okay. I explained explain to you here that what some banks, you saw the other day that Access Bank published a result and said that their digital lending has increased by about $1 billion. You know, Guaranteed Trust Bank, I know, is doing that also, UBS. So a lot of banks are pushing towards that. Mm. Without that CBM policy, okay. maybe, maybe they wouldn't have done it now. Maybe they have done it uh, later. But that is uh, happening. All right, in 40 seconds, how can the CBN and the political government help the banks in this respect? This scenario you've just painted. Yeah, one of the things, CBN, you remember, CBN has, one of the things that have happened in Nigeria is that people borrow from one bank and abandon the loan right. and run to other banks. CBN, the CBN with the government have closed that window, saying that the banks have what the right now mm. that to chase the customer's money in any bank. Yeah. Any person who has borrowed from you and abandoned an account and has money in a bank, B or C, okay. you have a right to do that. That CBN has done mm. to help banks, and banks have ap um, appreciated that. All right, monitoring and transparency is the yeah. key word here. All right, uh, Chika and Bonamini, thanks for your thoughts on those issues.